So, hey everybody, couldn't sleep, um, as usual, got a gut-wrenching detox that I'm going through right now, and I uh, figured it was a better time now than any than any other time to, um, you know, just uh, share this little um, list that I've been making. Uh, last week I started writing down what I thought were like my favorite albums of, you know, every decade and uh, I wanted to share a little bit with you guys so um, I think I was gonna st this this time this 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 video I'm gonna um, not video you know this audio <laughs> I'm gonna share uh, my favorite albums of the 2010s you know because people always say that like there weren't a lot of music there wasn't a lot of music in the 2010s which is true to a certain extent if if like you're a real music enthusiast and you look through, you know, music from the 60s and the 70s, 80s, 90s, and whatever. Um, you know, the, the 2000s and 2010s pale in comparison. But um, there's still just, like, <clears throat> a lot of really good music. Like, unless you were born in, like, 2010, and then you're, like, 14 years old, and, you know, you <clears throat> you don't really... You might not know much. Not, not, not because you don't want to, but because, like, it's a little harder to to go back in time, you know, so I, I was born in 1991, so I knew a time before internet where it, you'd listen to a lot of radio, you had a lot of exposure to uh, different, you know, eras of music, so um, I made a list of rules, you know, to make it a little more interesting, uh, first rule is uh, no artist repeats, what that means is uh, it's just one artist, one album per artist, no, otherwise this list would be like 90 albums long. Um, it's got to be an album that you consider unskippable. That means that you, you, you put in a CD or <laughs> you put in a playlist, no shuffle. Uh, you start from beginning to end and there's not a single track that you consider you would skip. Um, there's no necessary order here. I just wrote it you know, off the top of my head. I'm winging it, guys. I don't like editing. Honestly, I don't even like video anymore. Uh, you know. So, oh, and you know, we're going to we're going to break the rules here and there, but you know, whenever whenever I get to a certain album that I know in my heart isn't the best album in the artist's discography, I'm going to say it, you know. So so this this album is this this list is very very personal. But um, there's a lot of shit here that I feel like is going to be lost in time eventually. Uh Album's got to be timeless in that sense. Uh, no greatest hits. That's the biggest rule for me. <clears throat> greatest hits, especially now that we don't have physical media, is basically somebody making a playlist for you. And also, it goes back to what I was saying about, like, you know, it's got to be completely unskippable. It's not a, you can't say a certain album is the greatest album of all time if you're only listening to it for, like, one or two singles. This has got to be, like, an album that, if I put it on shuffle, whatever track happens to come on you know that's a banger <laughs> uh so yeah let's uh, let's get started maybe i'll eventually go back into the video i mean the audio or whatever and set up some stock some time stamps just in case like nobody understands what the fuck i'm saying <clears throat> uh all right first off the first the first album i wrote down here was uh neck of the woods uh, it's a 2012 album by a band called Silver Sun Pickups. Uh, I've, I've listened to this album like countless times. And this was right when the band had like its big fall off. Because uh, Silver Sun Pickups like blew up back in 2009. Which you, you'll see that in the 2000s when I make that list. Um, they were all over MTV, all over VH1, much music. Uh, basically because a lot of their tracks were... A lot of their singles were on, like, um, you know, <clears throat> TV shows and, and, uh, and uh, you know, motion picture soundtracks and stuff like that. It's a really good album. You should check it out. <clears throat> it's not their best, but for what we have in the 2010s and what they eventually ended up releasing later on, which I consider a slop, you know, it's not that new. It's, it's a lot better. Uh, also, what you're going to see is that a lot of 
what I a trend that I noticed, especially in my, at least in my list, is that like from the 2010 era, like the beginning of 2010s to about halfway there, there were a lot more bands. I think it was just like this this like this ripple effect that was still coming off of like you know the beginning of the 2000s that led into you know the 2010s. That like halfway, like the halfway mark, all of a sudden the the trend like rock wasn't mainstream anymore, and you're gonna see a lot more rap. Not for me, I know I'm very I'm very mainstream in that sense, but uh, there was a, definitely a lot more rap artists. I was on Rap Genius, for example, around 2013, 14, checking out like you know the top 100 albums and stuff like that. So a lot of, a lot of things changed. Second album on this list. You gotta listen to this one if you've never heard. Uh, it's Some Nights. It's from 2012. It's from a super group called Fun. I'm sure a lot of you know that single, We Are Young, it blew up back in 2012. It was all over the place. But a lot of people didn't pay attention to the album. And it's a damn shame. But, you know, it's a weird band that had like two incredible albums and then just fell off of the face of the earth. I have no idea what happened to them. But that is, that's another album that I can listen to, like, all day. Like, if it was the only album on my, on my, on my phone, <clears throat> I could, I could, I'd, I'd be alright. I could, I could die happy. Uh, next album, this is Battleborn, also from 2012. It's from The Killers. This isn't one of their strongest albums, but I love it, like, conceptually. Because it's like, I, when I listen to the album, I feel like, like I've never listened to like Bruce Springsteen or anything like that, but that's like exactly what I meant. I imagine like I, I I get the feeling that that's what a lot of the influences from were from. It's like it's a lot more like country rock and roll, like you know leather jackets and <laughs> dirt roads. I don't know, I don't know how to how to explain it, but it's it's a great album. I love that. It's got a it's got an incredible intro. It's got a I, I like I like my album to have a good intro, a good outro, and no no filler just like i love my like tight 10 to 13 tracks you know, nowadays you have a lot of spotify shit that we'll, well we'll get into that another day but uh, all right here's another one that probably a lot of people don't know uh, it's an album called how i learned to stop giving a shit and love mindless self indulgence it's from 2013 it's from the band mindless self indulgence now uh, this was like a sort of underground band that started in the 90s uh, a lot of people nowadays know about the like allegations with the with the lead singer. Well, I'm not gonna get into that, but this is a a very strange like electronic rock album that was completely paid by the by by the fans. Like they came out and said, you know, if you guys wanna want us to keep making music, you're gonna have to pay for it. So they actually got together like hundred fifty thousand dollars, the fans, and they made the album, and it's insane. There's there's really like nothing like it. Um, this is one of my favorites here. It's a Congratulations. It's a 2010 album by a band named MGMT. It's a musical duo, actually. It's not really a band. Uh, <clears throat> this is an incredible album. I think it would probably go down as like one of the greatest albums of, two, of the 2010s, aside from my list. So you should probably listen to that one. Also, MGMT is just a, it's an insane band because they have they don't have a single album in their discography that's quite like the other like uh, back in 2007 they released a regular spectacular then after congratulations they had a sort of like short hiatus and they blew up again with um little dark age it's also a great album i would have put little dark age on here if congratulations hadn't you know just slipped in there 2010 so yeah <clears throat> so this is a complete le like a complete left from everything that I just mentioned. 2017's Drake album, More Life. I know technically they call it a playlist, but I don't care. It's an album. Uh, it's probably one of Drake's best works. I, I, I was going to put Views on here because Views like really changed my life. But um, yeah, More Life is incredible. He, he takes so many like he takes so many chances on this album. Like I don't think he gets enough credit for that. Like at this point, where he was really experimenting, experimenting with different sounds and and collaborating with different artists 
from the UK and like Afrobeats and there's a there, you know with all of the things that happened this year like you're like well Drake yeah whatever but este, back in the day um, you know Drake was somewhat respected in the pop era uh, of the 2010s <clears throat> Like, he could do no wrong. Like, he would release an album every two years. And this was probably one of the best things he ever released. Um, 2016, Future. I put the Purple Rain mixtape. It's one of my favorites. Uh, there's not a single track I would skip. I know, technically, I should have put his debut album, his, his, his self-titled Future album. It's one of the greatest rap albums, I think, ever. But, like, Purple Rain is, is like, spectacular. I'm going to start to speed up here a little bit. But, um, all right. Honcho Jack, Jack Honcho, 2017. It's a collaboration album between Quavo and Travis Scott. Got to listen to that. Really cool. And speaking of collaboration albums, one of the biggest collaborations in like rap history, we have Jay-Z and Kanye West with Watch the Throne. That album hasn't aged as well, so I guess I'm kind of, breaking, like, the timeless rule. Like, I went back and listened to it, and I was like, mm, this doesn't sound like... This sounds old. Like, <laughs> it sounds old now, but, like, when that album came out, it was incredible. So, some incredible singles. The the flows, the raps, the beats, the... Uh, it, 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 like, in I close my eyes, and I just imagine, like, Kanye West, he was just, like, on the top of the world, and Jay-Z was already, like, you know, like... <clears throat> And indiscutab in, in, in indiscutably one of like the best rappers of all time. So it's like almost like Kanye West like riding on a Jay Z dragon, you know. <laughs> it's uh, if you've never listened to that album, watch the throne, check it out. Uh, then we have um, back to a little bit more rock. And these are all rock albums. This, this is the part of the list where I just start like remember. I was like, oh, I can't believe I forgot these. Um, we have uh, Paramore's self-titled album from 2013. I could have put any Paramore album here, honestly. Um, no, not really. Not really, because all, all of the good Paramore albums are in the 2000s. So that was actually, that's, that was actually a harder choice Like when, when I get to that list eventually. Uh, this, th I know, this was a no-brainer, actually, because everything, everything after this album becomes like, too pop. Way too pop. This is, like, this is probably one of the last good Paramore albums, the 2013 self-titled album. Um, of Monsters and Men drops in 2011 there, My Head is an Animal. It's a very abstract Icelandic rock band. Um, you know, very abstract lyrics. Um, you'll never hear something similar to that either. Like, there's so many good bands that come out of out of Iceland like oh I forgot to put low roar here like if, if and 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 the um I guess you could say the death stranding soundtrack <clears throat> but uh yeah groups m music from Iceland is really tight so this is the only of monsters and men album I would recommend to anyone uh, after that it's just it's downhill from there but uh great great debut album there's a band, there's a group called Fantagram in 2010. They released what I considered like their best, maybe only best album, Eyelid Movies. Unless you count like, the Nightlife EP, which is really, really good. Check out the Nightlife EP as well. But um, Eyelid Movies, it's all these electronic sounds. Very strange. Like if you listen to like electronic music, like, like EDM and stuff like this, this is completely different. It's, uh, it combines like you know, um, certain rock elements, but, um, with singing, but mostly like just sampling, which I love. I love sampling. I sample so much music when I make music, I make electronic music. Um, I love sampling and, and Fantagram was a big inspiration for me. Uh, Panic at the Disco, 2011, Vice and Virtues. Vices and Virtues. That's, um, that's the only <laughs> that's the only Panic at the Disco album you need to listen to in the 2010s. They had some really good music in 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 the 2000s, but we'll get to that some other time. 
Uh, this album is really, really important. Uh, we have Arcade Fire's The Suburbs from 2010. It, like, starts off the decade so perfectly. It's one of, like... Arcade Fire is so, such, such a strange case because they, they had, like, this incredible run, like, from their debut album all the way to maybe you could fit in Reflector as, like, meh. But The Suburbs is, like, 10 out of 10. It's a conceptual album about growing up in the suburbs, about, you know, longing longing for the way things were before. And if you were born in the 90s, like, you'll really feel for this album. And even if you don't like Arcade Fire or you don't know who Arcade Fire is, this album is spectacular. That's that's something else I want to get back to for a second. That um, None of these, like, bands or artists, I'm not recommending these artists or these bands. I'm, I'm recommending these albums specifically. Oh, 2015, The Prodigy, The Day is My Enemy. I don't have a lot to say about that. I just love The Prodigy. And that, that was like the last album before, you know, one of the members died. And that was just like, that's it. We're done. But they were big in the 90s. Really important. Probably one of the only groups to make it out of the uh, whole rave scene. Got a few more here. Honor, honorable mentions, I guess you could say. We're just going to rush through them. Uh, Pom Pom, Ariel Pink. It's Ariel Pink's album, Pom Pom, from 2014. It's like some lo-fi rock. It's really cool. 2011, Torches, from Foster the People. Bang Pow Boom. <laughs> it's a 2010 album from Insane Clown Posse. Now, I was a big juggalo in the 2000s. I was 13, imagine. You know, in 2006, I was 13 years old. So I actually paint, I used to paint my face on Halloween. Um... 2019, man, we got a Tool album, Fear Inoculum. It's far from one of the best Tool albums, but it is a Tool album. We actually got a Tool album in the 2010s, and we'll probably never get another one. So, Oh, here it is. A Perfect Circle, speaking of Tool, A Perfect Circle. It's 2018 album, Eat the Elephant. Uh, this is probably the best A Perfect Circle album. I, I tried going back and listening, because I listened to a lot of music making this list, like to go back into, which is really cool. When you're making this list, you, like, you remember all of, the, all of the music that you used to listen to. Um, this is a spectacular album. You have to listen to it. Maynard, anything Maynard touches is just gold. Uh, oh, these are a couple of nice ones. A Black Mile to the Surface. It's a 2017 album from the band Manchester Orchestra. It's a conceptual album about growing up in a small town in, um, in the U.S. It's a great, great album. Great album. I've listened to it a lot of times. Uh, this, is, this, is, this might make you laugh, but I, I've, I've never been like a big fan of Linkin Park. They were great when they were like contemporary music, but my favorite Linkin Park album of all time is 2010's A Thousand Sons. If you've never listened to that album, if you brushed it off occasionally, you got to go back and you got to listen to it. Then we have a band called Bent Knee with their album Shiny Eyed Babies from 2014. They're like this weird opera metal, very weird, very strange album. Not many people know about it. Um, Alabama Shakes. Uh, it's a really cool band. Sound and color is the album. I can't remember the year. I forgot to write it down. And then there's this band that absolutely no one knows about. It's called Hosannas. They released an album in 2018, finally. It's called Picture Him Protecting You. And um, 